I started a file that has probably got bigger over the years um, that split up to keep my appointments in order. From seeing the doctor and then seeing the specialist, it was quite a quick process, but it took quite a few days to come out with all the facts and the life expectancy because it's the thing you don't want to think about yourself and you don't want to tell others, but I have and we've now accepted it because nothing else we can do. We are talking about a disease which is called IPF, which stands for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. It is a fibrotic disorder affecting the lung of a known origin. It is a progressive condition and the expected survival after diagnosis is between three and five years. It is important to catch the disease very early and to start treatment as early as possible. Currently, the disease is diagnosed using a combination of high-resolution CT scan, which is expensive and exposed patient to radiation, and in some patients, surgical lung biopsy, which is invasive with the risk of mortality. So we have been starting looking at the use of lung sounds uh, for the detection of patients with early disease. Now, chest auscultation has been in practice since centuries ago, but has never been properly assessed or properly evaluated. And by the way, is one of the unique pieces of clinical information which is actually not recorded in our file or in clinical practice. It's just ridiculous at the moment. It would be like having like measuring blood pressure and forget about the number. And the next time the patient gets in, do not have any uh, record of the measuring that you did before. So one of the technological advancements which is making feasible now the use of lung sound for the detection of patients with IPF is the availability of electronic stethoscopes. These stethoscopes allow amplification of the sounds and at the same time recording and storing of the audio files. Now we need someone with the competence to analyze these audio files and to recognize the acoustic features that are inside. And to do this, we approach the Institute for Sound and Vibration Research at the University of Southampton. They have a long-standing story of being able to analyze acoustic files in the context of biomedical applications. The ISVR is a specialist institute for the study of sound and vibration. So we study anything to do with sound and vibration ranging from human hearing to aircraft noise. For the IPF study what we're looking at is taking those recorded signals and analysing them to find a way to automatically decide whether we think that the person we've recorded has that disease or not. So what we're looking at is something that says to the clinician, trust your instincts what you're hearing might well be IPF and it is worth exploring this further and maybe sending this person for further analysis. Of course the role of the ISVR is invaluable, but I think as a respiratory physician the role of a clinician remains unreplaceable. He has to deal with the patient's needs, uh, he needs to um, give explanation to the patient and uh, he can do this uh, using his uh, own uh, expertise, using his knowledge about the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, and we know that this disease is characterized by a decrease in quality of life, and this is one of the aspects which are most important for the physician. Now you can see that a multidisciplinary team is needed to achieve the goal of early detection of patients with IPF, and all of these advantages can be set at the best in the context of primary care, where the patient with early disease sit and where a cheap point of care and non-invasive and non-dangerous tool like electronic sound auscultation will be most effective in the identification of patients with IPF. The ultimate scope is to improve the care of these patients, the quality of life, and the long-term survival of a patient with interstitial lung disease.